So now we're going to look at joints, which is the spaces in between the bones in your skeleton. And there are different classifications of joints. The first type of joint is called a bony joint. So sin means uh, together. And then os is bone. So this is together bone. Uh, so a bony joint is formed when bones become effectively merged into one. So an example of this would be the frontal bone. So in the infant, these are two separate bones, but in an adult, these become fused together to the point where you can't even tell the difference between the two bones, and it's essentially one bone. A fibrous joint is called a synarthrosis, and this occurs when there is collagen fibers that bind the adjacent bones together. And there are three big examples of this inside the body. The first is in the sutures. So this is a close-up of the sutures between the two parietal bones of the skull. And you can see that there are small fibers connecting these together. These are pretty much immobile, um, and they're found only in the human skull. Another example is the gomphosis, which you can see is a zoom in here on the tooth. Uh, so this is the periodontal ligament or the socket of the tooth. And you can see there are discrete bundles of fibrous tissues holding the tooth to the socket. So if you reach in and touch your tooth, it'll wiggle a little bit. But this is what keeps your tooth anchored inside of the joint. Um, some people, when they have uh, tooth decay, when bacteria get down into the gums, that causes uh, gingivitis. If bacteria get far enough down into the gums to start eroding these ligaments, that's called periodontal disease and is usually followed by tooth loss. So brush your teeth. Uh, the last kind of fibrous joint we saw in the skeleton. So these are collagen fibers that are going to hold two adjacent bones together. So in this case, we've got the tibia and the fibula. We also saw this in the arm with the radius and the ulna. Another classification of joints are cartilaginous joints. Uh, and we have two different types of cartilaginous joints that use two different types of cartilage. So the first example is a synchondrosis, which uses hyaline cartilage. And these are found on the diaphysis so the, uh, and the epiphysis of child children's bones, so the central and the end of bones in children. And then these are typically also found on the first rib, so this is rib number one, and where it attaches to the sternum here. And so this is called hyaline cartilage, and it's actually different. The rest of the ribs are going to be synovial joints. A symphysis is made up of fibrocartilage. And we have two good examples of that, your pubic symphysis here. This is where the two hip bones come together in the front. And this actually gets a little bit loosened in women that are going to have um, a baby to allow for this birth canal to uh, expand and wiggle a little bit. And then you have fibrocartilage in your intervertebral discs between all of your vertebrae, which collectively give you flexibility. Each individual joint doesn't move a lot. But because you have so many joints all along your vertebra, you're able to have a large amount of flexibility in your spinal cord. The last type of joint is called a synovial joint or a diarthrosis. Um, and these are the most popular joints in your body. And everything we're going to talk about from this point on is going to be about synovial joint. So here is a representative synovial joint. You can see this is the joint between the proximal and the intermediate uh, phalange. And they typically have two pieces of hyaline cartilage. These are called articular cartilages. So here's one hyaline cartilage on the proximal phalanx, and then here's one on the middle phalanx. And those cartilage work as like buffers, so they help in case they touch. Um, they're going to keep the bone from rubbing on bone. The whole joint is surrounded by this large joint capsule, and the joint capsule is made up of two parts. So there's a fibrous capsule, which is on the outside, which is made up of the ligaments and tendons that attach the bones to the bones. And then on the inside, we have the synovial membrane. So you can see that in pink here. Here's the synovial membrane. It's going to go all the way around, all the way to this side, creating kind of a sac. 
and the synovial membrane is really important. It's what's going to secrete new synovial fluid. So all of this space in here is full of synovial fluid. And synovial fluid is not like water, it's very slippery. Um, it would be like raw egg whites if you were to touch it. Those are very hard to pick up. They're gonna slip right through your fingers. And what this does is it helps to provide nutrients um, because it's continually being secreted. It's also continually being filtered. So we have macrophages that are gonna remove wastes from the synovial fluid. And because it's so slippery, it helps to reduce any friction in the joint. A bursa is a sac of synovial fluid that is not necessarily inside of a joint. So in this picture of the hand here, you can see the bursa are colored green and they create this sac. And the po point of these is to be filled with fluid and allow these tendons to pass through them. So what happens is that creates an area of very low friction for the tendons to move through. So in areas like the hand and the foot, where the tendons are moving a lot, uh, this provides less friction to allow for less irritation. Um, anytime that we have a disease of the bursa or inflammation, you might have it called bursitis. Um, if it's inflammation in a joint, that would be called arthritis because arth means um, joint. So take a moment and differentiate between cartilaginous joints and synovial joints.